I'm with Peter Jacobson, who is one of the co-owners of Lake Country Builders, a company that uh, you built with your wife, what, how many years ago? Uh, 35 years ago. 35 yep. years ago, here in, in Minnesota, uh, remodel, renovate, and build custom homes and uh, gone into the sustainability side of the business, which is what we're going to talk about today. What made you do that? Let me start with that question. Why sustainable living now? Um, well, you know, a, co a couple of years ago, uh, with the economy changes, one of the thoughts was, um, you know, what are the things we can do to uh, enhance our business? I mean, so that was a thought, and one of the thought was, well, because green and sustainable building was important, why don't we uh, start transitioning the company into, you know, green and sustainable building? And um, from that thought, uh, it was also part of my wife's personal nature all the time. And so it kind of fit real good to just transition into that type of building. So what does that really mean for your customers in this area? Well, it means that for our customers, we're bringing to them a, a way of building that includes certain um, fundamentals of uh, sustainable and building green, uh, which uh, could include that they get naturally uh, how we... Um, um, get rid of our rubbish uh, that we recycle. Um, it, what we're offering as far as uh, products, uh, dual flush toilets and things, that we wouldn't recycle like that before. We wouldn't really have offered that before, but now we're offering all that, and it's become a part of our uh, specification that we will of what we bring at its base in every project um, and how we kind of do home health testing for them. So it's all of that has become part of our culture. All of that put together and, and part of your culture. Mm -hmm. So let me, let me break it down. Mm -hmm. If you are remodeling a bathroom, for example, to make that bathroom green, what will you look at and then what will you do? Well, from start to finish, the first thing we look at is how we're getting rid of the things and if we, we could recycle anything. Can we recycle the metal? Can we recycle the bathtub? Can we recycle any appliances to render? That's the first thing that comes about. Um, as you move into uh, selections and product, uh, it's what kind of tile are we using? Is, is it tile that has recycled content in it? Um, which many tiles do uh, for a very efficient cost. And so uh, you're getting a cost savings by being green. Uh, we're looking at countertops. Uh, we're looking at the, the fixtures, for example. There's a, uh, there's a low flow shower head that uh, saves a lot of water and it's very reasonably priced. So you're actually saving money on the shower head versus one you might purchase. And I have in one of my own home I take a shower with every day and there's plenty of uh, water comes out of it. And uh, it's very efficient costing. So we're looking at all those products starting with how we take the product apart and what we offer the client for selecting including um, letting them know that the paint we're going to be using is low VOC paint. VOC? Low VOC, which, which is off-gassing. It, it's a chemical that uh, normal paint uh, gives off a gas. If you were going to a bedroom uh, that you just painted, you'd walk in and you'd smell the paint. Well, if you use low VOC or no VOC paint, you're not smelling anything and it's that gas. And what does VOC mean? What do the letters mean? Um, there you have me. I'm not sure of uh, uh, what those particular letters mean. I think mean, it's volatile organic compound, compound or something. Compound, something yeah. like that. So the, the bottom line is it's not toxic. Not toxic. Um, let me ask you about your, your low flow shower head. You said you actually the, you get good flow, but you also save money. How mm -hmm. do you save money? I mean, how much water do you know how much water you're conserving and how much lower your water bills might be, you know? Well, I'm not, I'm not certain about how much water we're saving, uh, depending upon a water bill, other than t to say that I know it, it does save water. And at, its, uh, at the beginning, you're saving money on the fixture, of course. You're exactly what the dentist uh, office, mm. um, where it only comes on when you step on the, on the pedal. And every time I use it in the morning, I know how much water I'm saving because you're normally you're turning on the faucet, turning around, the water is running. When you're when you're using this, it's just right there, and all you're using is the little spurt that comes out of the faucet. So you know we offer that. We talk about that countertops. Um, there's a lot of different sustainable products in countertops: paper stone, soapstone, um, a lot of products that are coming out glass uh, countertops. However, some of those some of those uh, as far as cost isn't isn't um, saving you any money. It's just that it's more sustainable and green. One countertop that does save, uh, uh, save money, uh, interestingly enough, and I just learned this uh, the other day, was if you're putting a plastic laminate countertop in, which is a, a, a fairly cost-effective, efficient product, you can put um, um, a marmoleum 
countertop now and use a uh, uh, low, uh, I mean, uh, uh, no formaldehyde uh, subside. You're using marmoleum, which is a recycled product, and that price point is very similar to plastic laminate. Mm -hmm. And so you're getting a totally green countertop at a very effective cost. And a very interesting name, marmoleum. Marmoleum. You know, very <laughs> Take off on linoleum, I guess? Well, it, it is. And my, my, when I heard about this, I thought, well, is it, is it, is it good for countertop? Well, we use it on floors, too. So, I mean, if you could walk on it with your, it's, oh, it should right. be okay for countertop. I would think so. so. I would think know. so. Um, and another product uh, that we recommend, too, is uh, that I have at my own home is a concrete countertop. Concrete is recyclable. Yeah, concrete is recyclable and 100% uh, recyclable. And, uh, you know, the price point is probably similar to the uh, uh, the custom countertops most people put on, but it's 100% recyclable. Concrete. I can't imagine that cabinets um, would be, for example, if you're custom making cabinets, I can't imagine there's anything sustainable unless you're using recycled wood. Well, it's uh, we're using uh, no formaldehyde in the uh, uh, the shelving, which a lot of the shelving, the particle board, use formaldehyde. So if you use no, if you specify uh, no or low formaldehyde product in the shelving, then it's totally green. Um, the painting you're using, you want to use a lower no VOC, mm -hmm. so that's sustainable and green. Uh, painting, uh, for example, the paint uh, when they start coming out with the paint, um, it was uh, the gallon of paint was the cost was higher. Uh, when it first started coming out. Well, now you can buy a little bit lower no VOC paint for comparable cost of real paint. So why wouldn't you use lower no VOC paint? Because it, there's no off-gassing. So. But the cabinet, you know, custom cabinets themselves, um, you, you know, um, have a cost, have a certain cost um, for, for getting that level of cabinets. There are different types of cabinets that you can save um, money on, but that's just kind of shopping and... The structures, one of the things that I've had a problem with personally at home, windows. So when you look at the whole structure of a home and you're, you're renovating or remodeling a home or even custom building, what are you thinking of in terms of infrastructure, heating, cooling, and all of that? Well, it, with windows, one of the uh, green, um, uh, as far as um, uh, earning uh, a green star certification or lead certification or, or uh, when you're talking about building sustainable building is you know the airflow through a home you know where are your windows and how is it designed so that uh, green building and sustainable building starts in design that's one primary thing everybody should understand if you're designing a new home it starts in design and you have to focus on it at that time on such things like where do the windows go and how the air travels through uh, when you're talking windows, it's the type of um, uh, glass and the type of R rating in, in, the, uh, in the glass. R rating? The R rating. Every window has an R rating. And, and typically the, home, the, the windows we're putting in now are, are called, it's a thermal pane, argon gas filled uh, glazing. And so there's different R ratings, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, what have you. And the higher the R rating, the uh, more insulation qualities the window has. Um, so that's a little bit about windows and in design um, of a new home. Um, well, then let me interrupt you there yeah. on that, on that, because I, I want to get mm -hmm. to insulation and all that. Mm -hmm. But when you're with windows, how much money can you actually save in your in your heating bills? Is there a percentage that if if you go from a single pane, you know, older homes window windows to the new R efficient? energy efficient windows, high R rate. Well, I think I'd answer that by going back to what should one do. Um, and, and let's just, for the sake of this uh, conversation, let's take, for example, a remodel project, uh, a house that you're going to do a lot of work on. Maybe you're going to put a big addition on. The first thing you should do is uh, have a blow door test, an infrared test, because what this does, it leads you to all those things where you can save. It leads you to changing your windows because your windows are shown on the infrared that they're all leaking. It leads you to change your insulation in the walls because it shows you, uh, uh, by having these tests on, where you're losing all the heat. It leads you to uh, uh, incorporating, um, uh, encapsulizing all your can lighting because it's showing you all the heat that's leaving out of your can lights. So uh, these tests that are done in the blow door test which is an energy audit, really. It's an energy audit. It leads you to all the things that you should fix, which leads to, if you're fixing all those things, every time you're fixing those things, is saving you dollars in energy. It's not going out your window. It's not going out your ceiling. Um, how much that is and, 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 and how much you're saving is a function of, of every different house. If, if you're building a new home and you do all those energy-saving things, you're starting out on the right foot and you're, and you're saving money. 
what, pe- what we see people doing now are these older homes built in the 20s or things, especially with the rebates that are coming on. They're changing their windows and their furnaces and their air conditioners and adding insulation and then increasing their cost savings. Right. Well, uh, my window installation, the, the installers we talked about, and they told me it would be about between 30 and 50 percent of, of my energy costs would be decrease. It would be that much of a decrease, which would be great, but uh, it goes back to how many of the other things also will I have done. That's why there's such a 20% range, So, but it's it's still pretty good, and uh, and, right. the, and you brought up uh, rebates, for example, incentives. Mm-hmm. I think what's the tax incentive for Windows is... Well, right now it's $1,500. Right now, as we speak, until December 31st, right. it's uh, $1,500. Uh, that the government. It's a cap, and you can use that for such things like uh, Windows, um, a furnace, uh, air conditioning, uh, doors, and uh, to a cap of 30%, which means that if you if you change some windows and doors and get a new air conditioner for $5,000, you're getting a full $1,500 mm-hmm. rebate. If, if 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 the upgrades are less than that, you wouldn't get the $1,500. You get the 30% of it. That supposedly ends at December 30th, and unless the government changes. The federal government, right. And, and, there, and I believe there's a push on to change it because yeah. so many people do want to make the changes. Well, there should. Because a lot of people are using it. I mean, a lot of people are taking advantage of that right now. There's a tremendous influx of furnace and air conditioning change out. As long as you, as long as you install a 90, I think it's a 94% High right. efficient furnace. So if you change your windows, you get fifteen hundred dollars up yep. to fifteen off your windows, yep. up to fifteen hundred dollars off your furnace. So if you're doing all those things, well, no, a- no, I think the way it works is that there's a fifteen hundred dollars, there's a thirty percent cap up to fifteen hundred. Right, up to fifteen hundred, yeah. but for each. Um, no, not for each not one. For it's each a total. One, it's a total, a total. It's a total of fifteen hundred write off. I was hoping. Yeah, I was too. <laughs> I that's was that's what I actually that's what I thought too. I thought it was fifteen hundred for each item. But uh, I actually called my heating guy this morning um, to just verify that, and he just gave me the whole thing where you could use it for anything you want, up to 30%, up to 1,500. So your company, you cover pretty much everything. You Mm -hmm. started off because you love carpentry, I gather. Yeah, right. Right, boy. And now you're all over, Uh, um, all over. I mean, all 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 parts of of homes. What is your your best piece of advice to people who are saying, "I've got to start being energy efficient in terms of my home, not not just things that we do." turning off the tap while we're brushing our teeth, for example. Uh, what, what would you recommend as the first thing people do to get started? To get started, to get started, absolutely, number one, would have the energy audit, have a blow door test and uh, an infrared test. That is going to tell you how your house is operating, primary. I have my furnace inspected, my air conditioning inspected. That's going to tell you, um, uh, you know, how your furnace is operating. And if you have a 60% furnace, you know, you should increase the, uh, that. And um, that's where I would start, and because that's going to tell you everything you need to do. And bottom line, if you do start making repairs, that means saving money? Mm-hmm, absolutely. I mean, where, where you're saving it is, of course, there's an investment. I mean, when you're, when, when you're changing, whether you're remodeling or you're doing it for energy upgrades, there's an investment. Um, but, however, uh, an example, and, and, and this is this is 100% accurate in, in, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, talk about geothermal heat. Uh, you have a, a furnace that's uh, bad, and you have an air conditioner that's bad. It needs replacement. Okay, if you install a geothermal heating system, and we're talking about an average home, um, an average home to put in a heating and air conditioning system is, let's call it $15,000. If you put in a geothermal system to take care of the heating and air conditioner, for that average home, it could cost you less $30,000. Well, that's double the price. However, until 2016, there's a 30% rebate for geothermal, which means that you know that $30,000 investment is a $9,000 tax credit, which means it costs you $20,000. Now there's a $5,000 difference in putting a whole geothermal heating and air conditioning system in versus putting the the, the $15,000 heating and air conditioning system in. That $5,000 difference is going to pay back in three to five years. So that is, to me, that's a no-brainer, and there's a lot of geothermal systems going in uh, in existing homes, too. I I live in Minneapolis, and uh, up and down the street, people with small yards, they're popping in geothermal. Right, because you're also saving during the day when you're using the heater, let alone those rebates and when it pays itself back. So you're already yep. reducing your energy costs by using geothermal. Yes, and with geothermal, you also have the uh, off-peak electrical. You can um, 
uh, you can hook up if you have a dual fuel source, and uh, that is going to save you hu huge on your electrical bill for uh, your uh, your heating plant. So if you put the geothermal in, you, you get a dual fuel electrical off-peak rate. Your off-peak rate goes from, let's say, $0.08 cents a kilowatt to $0.02 cents a kilowatt. You're saving 50% of your electrical bill for your heating source. So, right there. Lot to think about. Lot to think about. Lots of money to be saved. Initial investment. Uh, most people want to know what the payback period is, and each of them have their different payback period. Thank you. Yeah. A lot you're of details. Lot yeah. to remember, but thank yeah. you. <laughs> you're welcome. Mm -hmm.